Hello everybody, uh, in this video um, I'm just going to be going over sort of a, a lesson plan for the Intro to Manifold series. Um, I just want to talk about sort of uh, things I have planned uh, and some options. Now, um, at least in the arithmetic functions video, I haven't really been getting too much feedback, but hopefully uh, I get a little more feedback here. Uh, because, you know, it's, I mean, manifolds is a broad sort of topic to, or thing to talk about. Um, and so, currently, when I was making the sort of list of topics to go over, uh, they, they split nicely I think into sort of three, three chapters. Um, uh, let me give me, give myself some more room here. So three chapters. And if I'm really going for this sort of intro uh, approach, right? I I think I would really only go over the first chapter. So um, the first video. I, I'm going to do a, a review of topology just for anyone who hasn't sort of seen topology before. Um, and, and, and that's the thing. I don't know. Uh, I haven't really done, I mean, other than Olympiad level stuff, I haven't done, you know, like proof, like college level proof based math on this channel before. So I don't know how I want to approach it. Um, I mean, I want to be rigorous, um, but there are obviously, well, one, there are going to be things that I'm going to be stating without proof, uh, whether it's facts from topology or facts from analysis, um, because those are sort of prereqs that you're going to have to have when going into a course about manifolds anyway. Um, so I won't necessarily go through and prove things from those background materials like topology and analysis. Um, however, I, I want to, um, I don't want to do that with the things about manifolds, right? I want to sort of show how things can be worked out and proved. Uh, but I also don't want to, you know, just sit and like go step by step through proof. I, I want to make it at least a little bit more interesting than that. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So anyway, the, the first video will be um, just like a, a comprehensive, hopefully, um, uh, an, an intuitive introduction to topology. It'll probably be pretty long, uh, but I hope to cover everything that's going to be necessary to understanding uh, the series. Uh, so then the next thing would to be actually to talk about uh, what manifolds are and what are some basic um, basic examples that you probably both some that you have seen, some you maybe haven't seen. Um, and then after that, uh, some more uh, Whenever we talk about mathematical structures, so a manifold is a mathematical structure, and whenever you talk about mathematical structures, there's always, um, so, you know, special properties that such structures can have. So we'll talk about that. Um, uh, what would be next? Uh, and then. So mappings, so functions from one manifold to the next, um, you know, and then continuous mappings, smooth mappings. Uh, we'll talk about that. Um, tensors on manifolds, a very, very rich and important part of sort of modern geometry, um, and especially for sort of like physics. And that sort of thing. Uh, and then related to that would be vector bundles. So like the tangent bundle 
uh, really when I when we're going over ve vector bundles, it's going to be like tangent and cotangent bundle, um, which really just means uh, pairing each point on the manifold with the tangent space at that point or the cotangent space. So that would be the first chapter, and that would really just be like an introduction, like surface material. Um, now the second chapter, so this would be the real intro, intro chapter. Now the second, um, the second chapter will be really analytical. Uh, so I guess a lot of it is really like differential topology. Um, so uh, let me think where we'd start here. So we'd start with partitions of unity. Um, and, and proving that you can construct these on uh, certain manifolds. Um, and then sort of from there go into some uses of that. Uses of POUs. Uh, so that would be like about half of the chapter. And then uh, Sard's theorem. And if I if I if we get to this chapter, if we do Sard's theorem, this will be sort of a complete uh, proof of Sard's theorem. And then uh, and then basically the same thing. We're going to be doing uses of Sard's. Theorem, which it has very many uh, uses. Basically, Sard's theorem says um, if you have some uh, smooth function from one manifold to the next, um, then the points um, basically. So let's let me try to explain this intuitively. You have some function, and just imagine now, you know, I'm saying manifolds, and I haven't talked about what manifolds are yet, but just imagine these are, you know, sets, and think of this as, um, you know, differentiable. So I'm assuming you've taken at least calculus here. Uh, this is like a differentiable function, right? So think about the points. Um, so points y and n, right, where y equals f of x, and then um, where f prime of x equals 0, right? So the derivative of x is vanishing. Um, then y would be known as a critical value of f. And what Sard's theorem says is it sort of generalizes this and says that all the point, all the critical values of some smooth mapping in N uh, basically don't take up a lot of space. And you can sort of ignore them whether you're integrating or you're um, shifting functions by a small amount. You can ignore uh, the critical values. The precise way to say that is that they have measure zero in N. Uh, we won't talk about measure theory here. Um, again, that's sort of going to be like an analysis prereq. Um, but, you know, that's just sort of how it goes sometimes. And then the third chapter, uh, I don't really want to say it's, it's, it's kind of some, so I'll say some, algebraic topology uh, and there's a lot more about algebraic topology that I could go into um, but I feel like even if I get to this third chapter uh, I, I've noticed you know when I make series like videos and series the views tend to drop off um, you know from from part one to the final part so i don't know because right here the, 
you know, I only have like four things in here, but these are going to be taking up a lot of videos because these are going to be really deep topics. Um, so here, right, I could probably make this, you know, five or six videos. Uh, this is going to be at least six, you know, six to eight maybe. Uh, and then here, this will be a shorter, uh, shorter chapter. Um, but I, I could throw in some more topics. Um, so really the only algebraic topology concept in here is homotopy. Um, and, and this sort of generalizes uh, some work that we'll do in the second chapter where we're like shifting functions by a small amount. So we'll, we'll make that analytically rigorous. We'll say like, oh, we've got two functions and, you know, we can define a metric on the function space and we say, okay, we have these two functions um, and, you know, their distance apart is epsilon or epsilon is as small as we want, right? And, and we, so we start with a function f and then we, you know, we shift it to some function g and the distance between f and g is small. Um, so we'll talk about in the, that, we'll use that terminology in the second chapter and then we can generalize that to having um, using homotopy instead. Um, so we'll we'll sort of translate the analytical nature into an algebraic nature, uh, which tends to make things easier. At least I prefer the algebraic view of things. Um, so homotopy, and and we'll show um, basically Sard's theorem. Well, like I said, right. We can ignore uh, critical values, so that helps us shift functions around, which basically means if we start with we're given some mapping, then we can shift it to some some other mapping that's really close to f that has some special property that we want. Um, and so we can basically just generalize that with homotopy. Uh, and then the next thing would be the degree of a map. Um, which, you know, is, is just a thing on its own. And then we'll show it's invariant under homotopy and all of that. Uh, and then applications of the degree. Um, so for instance, uh, we can you can prove the fundamental theorem of algebra uh, or let me think um, if you know integration of forms um, then you can show that the integration of the pullback is related via the degree um, so we can show that as well. Um, and again, this, a lot of this integration stuff will again rely on things like Sard's theorem and partitions of unity, right? You actually define integration over a manifold using a partition of unity. So even though it seems, it seems like something really, a lot of the proofs in the beginning are very like tacky, um, but but it, it, you really need that stuff to be able to rigorously define things like the integral over a manifold. Um, and so after application of degree, oh, and, and another thing here would be um, we, can, we can prove the gauss bonnet formula, formula. Um, and here we'll we'll sort of cheat and throw in some extra differential geometry. Uh, but what the Gauss Binet formula does is it relates the curvature of the sphere with G handles to um, to the to the number G, right? So basically here, uh, imagine, okay, if you have a sphere, 
I'll try to make this look good. If you have a sphere, this is a sphere with G handles, right? So we say it has genus zero. So what this is saying is that if you integrated the curvature over the sphere, you would get two. Well, and then divide it by two pi, right? You would get two. Uh, or if you had, um, gosh, how am I going to make this look good? Uh, okay, so this is a torus. I'm trying to make it look as 3D as possible. Um, so if you have a torus, that's, we would call it a sphere with one handle, so genus one. And so if you integrated the curvature over the torus, uh, so here Q is just, you know, whatever we're saying here, um, then this would be zero, right? So that's kind of a cool fact that if you integrate the curvature over a torus, you get zero. And, um, and really what this says is that even if we deform the sphere, like imagine you had a sphere made of Play-Doh and you just like put a smooth, as long as it's a smooth deformation, if you are, um, like imagine you just like, uh, put a little like dent in it. I don't really know how to draw that, but imagine you just press down with your thumb and imagine this, this part was like smoothed out. Um, then this formula will still hold, which, which is, um, sort of the beauty of this. So the Gauss-Binet formula relates, um, geometry so geometry is where the curvature comes from, and we won't, I, I won't have time to really go into the details of that, especially if we're, if we're already here, we'll be at like part 15 or 18 or something of the series. I don't even know if we'll get this far. Um, it'll just depend on viewer interest, to be honest. Um, so it relates geometry to topology, right? And, and you might notice, um, I, I've completely forgot to mention it because um, the proof of this fact doesn't use this uh, terminology, but uh, you might know that 2 minus 2g two is the Euler characteristic of a torus, or, or, or of, um, sorry, 2 minus 2g two is the Euler characteristic of the sphere with two handles. Um, so that's also... So this is a topological invariant. So it's relating geometry, which is the curvature, to the topology. Um, okay, where is it going? And then um, I, I think that'll probably be it. Uh, if we get there, um, that's probably going to be the stopping point, um, just because it'll it'll already be a super long series, um, and I don't I don't think we'll drag that on. Um, it'll just depend, you know, if a lot of people are like, put out more videos, then I'll be like, okay. Um, so anyway, yeah, this is just the, the part zero video. I just wanted to, uh, talk about what we're going to talk about. Um, so I will see you in the next video.